Moving forward. In this talk, I want to uh, elaborate and explain a little bit about staging mobilities as a, an analytical perspective uh, on mobility studies. Um, and I also want to give you a few examples of how to think with this concept. But before doing that, I think we could um, exercise imagination a little bit. So try to imagine um, driving either by car, bus, train or bike to work and then walking from, say, the parking lot to your, station, uh, to your office. During that trip, you will most certainly have been involved in multiple interactions with fellow drivers, pedestrians or other people. You're most likely to have drawn on routines as well as you have to improvise. Regardless whether you recall what was on your mind or not, the trip is sure to be a reflection of who you are and how you relate to the built environment and your consociates. So actually the morning trip to work is an embodied practice often influenced by other social agents and always within a material and physical setting. So you could say that your situational mobility from the morning trip has elements of your own choice, like choice of selected route, mode of transport, relaxed or aggressive driving, choice of seat, etc. Now these elements are all expressions of a staging with a relatively high degree of self-determination. It's your choice. But along the route and the way, your practices were modified by traffic lights, timetable, road design, traffic regulation, information systems, etc. Reminding you that there is a staging going on from beyond, above as well. So if you think about the actual situation of getting to work in this manner, you're very close to what the concept of staging mobilities is all about. That is about situational mobilities. So put differently, um, the concept uh, is about the fact that mobility is much more than movement from A to B. It concerns how the movement of people and goods, information and science influences our understanding of self, other and the built environment. Um, the perspective takes point of departure in the so-called mobility's turn, um, but it takes the analytical discussion further in terms of thinking about um, the relationship between movements and um, environment. So mobilities do not just happen or simply take place. They are carefully and meticulously designed and planned and staged from above, you might say. However, they are equally importantly acted out, performed and lived as people are staging themselves from below, so to speak. So the staging of mobilities is a dynamic process between being staged, as when the traffic light commands you to stop, um, or when timetables organize your route and itineraries, and then the mobile staging of interacting individuals, making their own choices as when you decide how to pass on a sidewalk between other people or other types of negotiation. So therefore the basic question from this perspective is to ask what are the physical, social, technical and cultural conditions to the staging of contemporary mobilities. Now, as a particular contribution to the field of mobility research, this perspective offers a number of theoretically derived but also empirically tested concepts that contribute to what you might call a new lexicon of mobilities. I want to show you a few examples of, of the concepts that I want to propose as ideas for this vocabulary of mobilities. One example would be the notion of a mobile width, which is, for instance, the dynamic and ephemeral flowing in and out of groupings as we move through the city, or the team as when a family or a group of friends are moving around in the city, or in a car for that matter. Another example would be the temporary congregations, which may be seen as when we walk towards the road crossing, uh, and a stop for red light and we becomes a group waiting to pass. Or in the elevator ride, when people with whom we, until we embark on the ride, actually do not know, suddenly becomes part of a common trip or travel together for a very short time. 
Another concept that we could think of is the notion of negotiation in motion, um, which is equally, equally derived from the staging mobility's perspective um, to coin the dynamic interaction that takes place whenever we perform mobilities in a busy transit space or when the mobile width is engaged in more or less explicit decision making concerning routes or mode of transportation. Like for instance, should we take this route or that route? Should we uh, go to the shopping mall or should we go uh, somewhere else? Those negotiations are taken internally within the mobile width, but they equally will be negotiated between other people. One example would be that we do not always choose where to go. Sometimes it's determined by, oh, there's a big queue, so we might alter alternate our routings or our ways of going. There's a number of other concepts developed within this idea of staging mobilities um, that will make the backbone of, of the book's contribution. But I think the key insight um, is that we need to understand the contemporary city as an assemblage of circulating people, goods, information and science in relational networks contributing to creating what I call the meaning of moving. So what is actually the repercussions of this movement? How does it affect us in social relations, in individual perspectives, and not at least in our understanding of an environment, the built environment, as well as the natural environment. Now the livescapes of such mobile um, and network conditions create individual experiences as well as collective processes. Um, we find inclusion, exclusion, sites, areas and people may be switched on or switched off and thereby being subject to complex relations of mobility capital and capacity to move or motility as some would term it. Even though the book takes point of departure in the mobility's turn, it actually tries to connect to a number of readings and literatures that are probably less familiar to the mobility's audience. Um, part of that being architecture, design and uh, planning literatures. Um, and I think this is part of, of my interest in trying to show how the connections between mobility's literatures and the uh, design uh, fields, so to speak, might be an opportunity to enrich uh, our understanding. So I would argue that the work on the perspective may be understood as what I would call a mobile situationism. Um, but this is meant to put the actual and situational practices at the center of analysis. So, in the staging mobility's perspective, I understand a mobile situation as a dynamic and process-oriented event in time-space and not as a fixed point. So, for instance, if we're thinking about the number of network and digital technologies like GPS transmitters, smartphones, apps and things that will modify our uh, interaction in the city, um, I think we need to stop thinking about the situation as a fixed point because the networks and the communication technologies reaches out and connects me to other people, other layers of information in the city. And so thinking about situations as only face-to-face -face proxemic interaction uh, seems to be less helpful. And we have to add to this that the situation is actually sort of stretching or reaching out, um, mediated by these technologies. Um, and this has all been very influenced by uh, the Canadian-born um, sociologist Erwin Goffman, who worked a lot with the interaction face-to-face -face in the city and in public spaces. So what I'm sort of proposing here is to recontextualize Goffman, or mobilize Goffman if you want, and put him into a contemporary understanding where his sensitivity to the nitty-gritty tiny details and how people move in spaces and interact is connected to the more contemporary understandings of, for instance, digital technologies and how they you know, interfere and mediate with our ways of getting around in the city. So to recontextualize Goffman, the ana analysis of the situation has to reach beyond the face-to-face -face interaction dimension. So one example of the uh, importance of these new technologies would be like the uh, intelligent traffic systems or ITS systems that we would find in many different cities across the world. Um, and also increasingly location-based um, services facilitating the choice of where to eat or shop or drink uh, are a few examples of how systems interfere to the situation and how you have to think about the situational reach out beyond, so to speak, the face-to-face. Um, level. Um, so a large number of trips are now done while people are also communicating as they move along. I like to think of this as 
we carry networks. So we're moving within networks, but we also carry networks. And often um, you might have experienced being in public transit that the first thing people would say would be inform uh, their communication partner somewhere else to say, I am in the bus, I am on the train and thus forth. So the, um, the reaching out and the non-proximic interaction, as I would call it, is increasingly become important and um, also being part of the technolo technological nexus uh, that we have to engage in as mobile subjects. So you might say that all, in all sorts of ways the situation reaches out and uh, in material terms this may in de be independences on hardwares and physical connection of infrastructures or as in the case of technologies how we are being um, informed by opportunities or problems along the road. Um, so a mobile situation may be where someone is on the move um, in the most traditional way as well as it can include very complex uh, communication technologies and ways of, of uh, engaging with, with, the, with these globally reaching systems. So in summary, you might say that a mobile situationism is an analytical focus that moves across scales, reaching from the body to the global. Um, like for instance, when I'm walking around in a city applying an app utilizing a GPS transmitter. You might ask, am I in a local or global scale? I don't think it makes a lot of sense. I think it makes sense to understand how the situation is embedded into these sorts of multiscalar uh, perspectives. Also, I think the situational focus explore mobile practices um, as creative and skillful dimensions to mobilities. People are actually performing these mobilities with a high degree of um, routinization as well as improvisation. So our everyday life journeys are sometimes very sort of systematic and, and almost like repeti repetitive, but they are also often um, conditioned on you to be able to do quick decisions on the fly, very easily to decide what to do. So I think what I'm trying to say with uh, mobilities uh, in situ as is my term for the situational mobilities, is that it uncovers the relational and associational character of, and practices uh, within networks and environments that affords and restricts particular practices. So I'm not trying to suggest that there is no over-individual or syst systemic property is working. Um, or neither am I trying to say that the human agent is an omnipotent or isolated field of force. Um, but rather I think the human mobile subject is a constantly mediated and negotiating entity within a network uh, of complex ecologies reaching from the very local to the very global. Now at the end of this book I'm proposing 10 pointers for future mobilities research that I want to very quickly just stress. Um, and some of them might be more manifesto-like, but I think for the sake of clarity, you often have to make your point very sort of, um, uh, maybe even provocative. I think, first of all, we need to think of mobilities in the plural. Um, I'm not just thinking here about the many modes, I mean, walking and trains and flying and stuff, but also the uh, empirical diversity and uh, the, 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 the multi-layeredness of mobilities um, actually feeds into our language. This is why we talk about mobilities rather than mobility. Right? So we're thinking about um, a, a complex uh, and, and ontologically speaking very very varied uh, phenomenon. Now second to that and from that means that there is no singular discipline that can take care of understanding mobilities. You need a multidisciplinary perspective on this. The third point I'm making in the, in the, in the book, and maybe this is more um, as a comment to more sedentary uh, theoretical perspectives, I think thinking about mobilities does not turn everything into flow. What I'm interested in here, in here is to suggest that foregrounding mobilities make you understand structures, places and static entities or whatever in a different way. So it's not like everything is up in the air and moving about, but it is so, in such a way that you need to uh, 
understand these more or less static and structural properties from the point of view of the mobile or the mobilities. The fourth point I wanted to stretch by the end of the staging mobilities book was that if you're thinking about mobilities in this particular way, you would have to understand place in a relational sense, right? So I think despite the scale and, and, and the level that you're thinking of, um, any site, place, region, city will have to be understood relationally in its relation to other places, other sites. And I think the nature of that relation is dependent on mobilities and immobilities, flow and friction, and how that is played together. A fifth point that I want to make, which might sound more surprising or strangely, is to think about how these flow spaces, or what I call armatures in the book, the channels for movement, how they're actually public spaces. We tend to think of them as just instrumental spaces where we move from A to B, but they are actually our new agoras, potentially. Those are places where we can be exposed to ideas and public deliberation if we wanted to, and I think there's an awful lot of media interaction here that you need to think about in that respect. And I think if you wanted to look at a transit space as a potential agora or public space, public sphere, I think that is dependent on the sixth point of my list, which is to encourage what I call mobility's potential thinking. I think there's been quite a well-established tradition within the social sciences to point at critical issues, problems, what I term the dark side, uh, which is definitely relevant. But I think if you wanted to explore what could these spaces be, what could the potential for new types of social interaction be, you would have to think in a more potential uh, sort of oriented kind of way. And I think my colleagues uh, within architecture and design are often way ahead in terms of what the social sciences are able to do in this respect, which is why I'm working with these people to learn how to think about potentials, to see potentials in situations. Now, of course, this leads me on to the seventh point, which is that we still need to pay attention to what I call the dark side of mobilities. I think any, any way of working critically with mobility uh, research would have to acknowledge that we both need to understand the potentials, but also what I call the dark sides. And this could reach from anything from exclusion, social exclusion, power, segregation, to some of the more contemporary issues related to system failures, cri crisis, break breakdowns, and various forms of, forms of systems vulnerabilities that are exposing us to disruption um, and, and those sorts of things. Now the eighth point I want to make, which I'm sort of been building towards, is that I think we could get much deeper into our understanding of mobilities if we start exploring design, architecture, urban design, but also industrial design, systems design, various ways of designing the conditions for this situational mobilities. So in order to do that, I would propose to, to, to explore a term that I call the mobilities design. So how does these various design decisions and interventions affect the actual situations as we move about. And I think that would be um, a new field of engagement for me as a researcher. Now the ninth point I want to make is that I think there is a pragmatic dimension to this. Um, I think being governed by the question what might the practical effects be of this and that that is really important. And I think this is one of the ways that designers often ask themselves before intervening, what would happen if? And I think that way of thinking goes nicely hand in hand to, with some of the, um, the potentials within design that we can maybe try to export or learn from in the mobilities research. Now my final point, of the list of 10 in the book is that it all comes together in C2. I think there's an awful lot to gain from having this situational perspective. And I'm obviously aware of structural 
theoretical macro perspectives that are relevant, that this is also about how society in large and global capital develops conditions. Um, however, I think that, um, and this is where there's a lineage from Simmel to Goffman to what I'm doing, I think we can, uh, we need still to understand the various sort of practical on the ground situations for mobilities. Uh, so I think the most fruitful place to study this complexity is in an everyday practices and lived situational perspective. Now, ending off this uh, presentation of, of the state of mobility's perspective, I'd like to uh, not necessarily give an answer, but at least throw in a question. Um, so, I think one of the questions that would be relevant for us to think about in mobility's research would be, what would be the adequate policy implication of all this? Is there any relationship to policy, to planning, uh, to ways we organize or think about organizing differently, like transition, different ways of organizing our society? Um, and I think that a gaze from the point of view of situations would be an interesting and important antidote to, for instance, ab abstract traffic countings, you know, these huge large scale the theoretical perspectives that seems to govern a lot of planning, a lot of policy making. I think if you are applying a, th a situational perspective on mobile practices, you would have to acknowledge that people live in these spaces. People are moving along in these spaces and therefore any policy, any planning, any regulatory practice targeting these sorts of things would have to, so to speak, understand that perspective as well. I realize you need large numbers, big data and lots of, of, of structural understandings to organize big cities and societies today. But if you don't understand how it works for the individual, I think you're doing a poor job. So I think this is potentially an answer to what would be the adequate policy implication of the state of mobility perspective. <laughs>